It is election day in Brazil, and a far-right populist candidate is leading in a field of 13 candidates for president. Jair Bolsonaro voted this morning and predicted he would win without a runoff. The formerly fringe candidate spent part of the last few weeks of the campaign in the hospital after a near-fatal stabbing and has surged ahead in recent polling. Joining us now from Rio de Janeiro via Skype is New York Times Brazil Bureau Chief Ernesto Londonio. Uh, Londonio, so first tell me, how did he get to where he is today, considering that he was not a major party candidate? Many Brazilians are scratching their heads asking themselves that same question. A year ago, many people here in the ruling elite and the political establishment would have told you, this man does not stand a chance. This is a congressman who has little to show for his seven terms in office, and somebody who was the odd politician who spoke uh, approvingly of Brazil's military dictatorship and also stacked, stacked up a bunch of very controversial remarks about women, about black people, about gays. Uh, many people assumed he was just too toxic to be a viable candidate. However, something remarkable has happened in recent weeks. Brazilians are so fed up with politics as usual. They are so terrified of the level of crime. And they are so eager to see the anti-corruption crusade that the authorities have launched in recent years continue uh, without any obstruction, that they are pinning their hopes on this man who says he has answers to these problems. You know, as you describe this guy, or this candidate that, who might be president of Brazil, it's almost like a checklist of what happened in the United States before Donald Trump. Absolutely. There are many similarities. One of them is that he launched a remarkably uh, uh, unorthodox campaign while some of his rivals were spending, you know, lots of money on a conventional ad campaigns, on marketing firms. Jair Bolsonaro relied almost exclusively on his appeal on social media to build a base. This is a candidate who was not being backed by one of the big traditional parties with national reach, which in the past has been crucial to win a presidential election. Um, but he tapped into social media. His followers created this vast networks of chat groups on the WhatsApp uh, messaging platform. Uh, he's on Facebook all the time, just sort of speaking his mind, very unscripted on these grainy, shaky videos. And people who were very hungry for authenticity saw in him somebody who was being very authentic. And the currency of that seems to be very high in today's Brazil. What's the core or what are the core issues that are driving people to the polls? Is it about the economy? Is it about crime? I would say first and foremost, Brazil is grappling with uh, an unprecedented level of crime, violent crime across the country, particularly in the Northeast and in some of the large cities like Rio de Janeiro. Uh, you know, some people start their days looking at apps the way you and I might check the weather in the United States uh, to see where there are shootings happening so they can plan their daily commute. This is how sort of uh, deeply the fear of crime has seeped into people's routine. Um, but also, I think there's, for a number of years, there's been a sense that politicians in this country have become something of, you know, a kleptocrat, have become essentially kleptocrats. They've been, you know, stealing with abandon and largely with impunity for many, many years, and that they're only looking after their own interests and their own pocketbook. Um, so along comes this, uh, this congressman who has spent uh, three decades in, in office and who has been untainted by corruption allegations. And he says, I will make sure that we upend this game, that we change the way politics is played in this country, and we root out rat. All right. Brazil's bureau chief for The New York Times, Ernesto Londonio, joining us via Skype from Rio. Thanks so much. My pleasure.